everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine. So today I've got another Planet Zoo video for you. And in this one, we are building a cheetah habitat for our African Grasslands Contemporary Sandbox Mode Zoo, which is called a Nami Zoo. And in case you want to see more builds from this zoo, I will link a playlist in the video itself and down in the description box below. But for this cheetah habitat that I'm building today though, it is mainly just this big bridge or risen viewing walkway area and that's like the main feature of the build. And I've been wanting to do this particular design for absolutely ages because I've based it on a reference picture, which I normally do, and I found it when I was coming up with a theme for this zoo, so it was absolutely ages ago that I found this picture and that I thought of it and I've also recently discovered Pinterest as a source of reference pictures as well and it's so good for Planet Zoo. I don't know why I didn't use it before. I knew that some creators use it for Planet Zoo inspiration but I'd never had the app before so I'd never taken a look and yeah it's got so many good pictures and they all come up so quickly like I think it took me a couple of searches to get the right set of images that I was interested in and then everything after that like the algorithm had just figured it out so I would really recommend getting Pinterest as a source of inspiration if you guys are Planet Zoo builders like me but anyway in terms of the build itself then it took me so long to build this bridge structure especially all of the details with the metal arches that you can see me making in the minute they took me absolutely ages and then all of the the timber structures and everything as well they were so fiddly and there was so much footage of me doing it I did end up cutting a lot out but hopefully you still get to see all of the process that was involved in it and you can use your imagination to yeah how I did all of the detailing because I thought it wouldn't be very interesting for you to watch all of the footage that I had so yeah I just cut that down a little bit for you and I am happy with how it turned out especially in terms of the shape and the look of the bridge but after I made it I regretted making the bridge so big especially I think it was the path that I made quite wide probably too wide and then that sort of made everything else bigger in scale because when I then put the cheetahs in the habitat after I'd made it all I thought that they looked way too small compared to their surroundings which is a shame because you really want the guests to be able to get a good view of the animals as they're walking around the zoo don't you so you want them to like sort of look reasonably big in their enclosure and I guess I could have made the walls like closer in towards the bridge made it sort of a narrower enclosure but in in terms of the screenshots that that didn't work so I don't know you can fiddle around with it if you place this in your game as always I will put a link to the workshop blueprint in the video description of my video and I think I've got one of the bridge individually and then one of the overall habitat for you in case you're interested in downloading it in either way but yeah I've just left it as a really big habitat for the cheetahs but you could adapt it if you fancied maybe it would be a better one for like lions or something like that because they're slightly bigger cats I know so yeah maybe it's a more of an appropriate enclosure for a different kind of animal and and something like lions as well don't they live in larger groups as well so that would kind of fill out the area nicely a bit better perhaps but as always I'll just say that with all my planets who build videos I have included plenty of cinematic shots of the finished build as well as the cheetahs enjoying the habitat at the end of the video and we did get some cheetah babies this time so if you want to check them out then make sure you stick around and the end of the video like I say so that you can see them and all of the cinematic shots but yeah I must say although cheetahs are one of my favorite types of big cats in real life I'm not the biggest fan of them in Planet Zoo the cheetahs and the lions I think are two of the least well-made animals in the game I feel like now they've gotten so far into it that they are creating some amazing animals and some amazing animations as well with all of the new animals that they add in DLCs but obviously lions and cheetahs are both from the base game and I suspect that with the lions in particular that they were perhaps one of the first animals that they made in the game because lions are obviously going to be considered a priority for any game that's you know zoo themed because they're like a key zoo animal aren't they but also because I always thought that 
the lions look a little bit different stylistically from all the other animals in Planet Zoo. To me they look a little bit more cartoonish and sort of less realistic than the other animals and it just makes me wonder if they had created them whilst they were still deciding what their style was going to be and like how realistic they were actually going to, to make the game when they created the lions. I wouldn't say that the cheetahs are the same sort of cartoonish style but I also think that they just haven't quite gotten their shape right or their design right as well as certain movements of the cheetahs. I think the shape of their heads in the game look a bit odd and they haven't got a long enough snout maybe or just yeah just the shape of them are a bit off which makes them look like they've got a monkey face that's what I was thinking when I was taking the, the footage of the cheetahs and in regards to their animations when they walk their legs just look a bit weird <laughs> just look a bit wrong but when they were running their animations are great I think and they've got it spot on as well as like when they're lying down and they have all of the cute little ear flicks and the tail flicks and they're just relaxing yeah there's some really good shots of them sort of looking cute and, and napping and, and just relaxing in the enclosure which I think they've got spot on it's just like certain aspects of the animals aren't quite right but let me know let me know what you think maybe you disagree with me maybe you love them in the game but yeah I just get the impression that maybe they were one of the first animals that they created and like I said they've just come on so far from then with all of the new animals that they've introduced so maybe I do hope that they might update some of the <laughs> less good animals in the game because they are also the most important aren't they like lions especially they should have some priority but I'm not holding out hope I am also really hoping for a few new big cats to be added to the game in the future including my favorite favorite big cat which are servals. They're quite similar to cheetahs in that they're like lean medium high African cats but they have really big ears and quite small faces as well and I would love to see their jumping animations and just yeah just to have them added to the game and yeah the, there's tons of cats that I've seen in different types of zoos in real life that we don't have in game. I don't think we have ocelots. I don't think we do. Do we have ocelots in the game? I'm doubting myself now. Maybe we do and I'm just and I've just never played with them I can't remember but yeah off the top of my head like maybe a Jeffrey's cat we don't have in game but let me know down in the comments what big cats that you are still looking out for because I know mountain lions was a big one for a long time and obviously that's just been added to the game so what else are you hoping for in terms of big cats let me know down in the comments but back to the build for a bit hopefully the footage I've included is reasonably self-explanatory but yeah just to explain it a little bit I used the base game metal pieces for the main structure of the bridge and it's worth me pointing out that I think they've recently updated these items and a lot of other base game objects as well to make them recolorable so I know for instance they've updated the limestone pieces and made them recolorable and I noticed when I was creating this that I clicked on that metal object because I wanted to use it for the design and it was recolorable and I swear it wasn't before maybe I'd never noticed and it was I might be wrong but at least the limestone has been updated definitely recently and yeah those those base game metal objects are now recolorable if they weren't before so if you didn't recognize them like me then that's where they're from they are actually base game objects they're not new and then once I've done the metal arches I actually sort of used the individual positioning of each of the sort of individual metal objects to then help me place where I put the timber pieces for the roofing section on top so that's just a little tip in case that helps you so I select the metal piece and I duplicated the piece but then changed the object to the timber object that I was after and and therefore I could have more control over how I moved it and it would start off in the position of the metal piece so that made it really easy for me to place all of the timber objects that's how I did that and then I was also really careful with how I grouped the items in this one particularly with all of the archways I think I like made one archway grouped it and then multiplied it and then I did the same with the timber arch as well so yeah it was just a lot of grouping and multiplying <laughs> groups of objects and the bridge is the only place that guests can view the cheetahs from but there is a backstage building as you probably see me make now with some cages and indoor enclosures for the cheetahs but the guests don't actually have access to that and for this area I use quite a lot of blueprints from the gallery for that backstage area so I will leave the names of the creators whose content I use and links to the theme workshop items as well in the description box of this video so just in case you want to download them too then you can go 
and do that there and I'll give credit obviously to the creators. Recently I've downloaded a ton of backstage blueprints into my game so that I can add some more details to the game because those kinds of things make a build look so much better but they take so much time and they're obviously not like your main focus of a build because they're backstage items, <laughs> they're not like the main habitat are they? They're not front facing so it's really handy for me just to have a few blueprints saved or to hands that you can just pull out and fill a build up with because yeah they take absolutely ages if you do them from scratch so I'm so grateful for all of the creators who create stuff like that they're so handy and in a minute you'll see me create the planter section at the front of the steps of the bridge as well and then you don't see what happens at the other side of the steps and I basically just duplicate all the planters and the step detailing that I put at the entrance to the walkway and I duplicate that and put it at the back so you're not missing out on anything it's pretty much the same I just wanted to let you know because yeah I was just being careful with how much footage I included in the video and when I started making this backstage area and indoor enclosure area you'll notice that I use a lot of these giant bars to create the cage inside which are, I think I duplicated from my rhino enclosure builds from the same zoo and Ami zoo but later on I decided that it looks really weird and I switch out the bars for wire mesh instead which I think just suits the scale of the cheetahs a little bit better because yeah the bars were quite big in comparison to them so you'll see that in a minute I think it takes me a while to actually come back to it but for the indoor area for the cheetahs that includes like two big caged areas or indoor enclosure areas one of which the cheetahs don't have access to and the other they do so they have access to half of the indoor enclosure area and I just thought it would add a bit of realism in terms of mimicking backstage areas where zookeepers try to separate animals when they need to give them medicine or for certain parts of breeding programs and things like that and for the same reason I also added these two smaller cage tunnels which act as entrances to the two enclosed spaces basically and they each have some mechanized doors which yeah like I say are the entrances to the area which obviously help to control where the cheetahs go and maybe they could be used to transport the cheetahs perhaps it's like a portable cage that they can then take out and transport the cheetahs somewhere or attach it to a portable cage somehow and yeah so I just thought it was a bit of realism and also I was struggling to work out how to get the the keepers to be able to go inside the cheetahs inside enclosure as well as to the outside enclosure it's really frustrating that we don't have the ability to have two keeper doors in planet zoo because that would just make things so much easier because then they could have access to the inside and then access to the outside and they would have a different access to the cheetahs themselves like quite often in planet zoo you have to make a build unrealistic so that the keepers go into the indoor enclosure through the same place as the cheetahs like in no real zoo does that ever happen obviously because planet zoo is magic and the keepers don't get maimed when they go inside the enclosure with the cheetahs so yeah it's just a bit of a it's a bit of a problem when you're trying to design realistic enclosures isn't it so I, I wish that someday we would be able to get like multiple keeper doors but I don't think we can I'm pretty sure we can't I mean correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below but I'm pretty sure I've tried before and failed and also I remember in my meerkat enclosure video that I thought that keepers could walk through fake doors you know the fake door objects we get in game I thought they could walk through those within an enclosure but they can't I think it's only if there's pathing down so I guess maybe if you put pathing down randomly and then covered it with the concrete that I've used that might work and the keeper might be able to travel through but then the barriers might prevent you from putting pathing down I'm not sure how it would work but yeah that is an issue you can't actually get your keepers to, to navigate the space that makes sense in real life and that you would want them to so it's a bit of a shame so the keepers actually can't have access to the indoor closure at all so hopefully that doesn't get too dirty and gross <laughs> But I'm, I don't know, maybe they can sort of hoover up. They've got those big hoovers, haven't they? Maybe they can hoover it up like from their staff facilities area next to it. I don't know. But anyway, you will have seen me adding those blueprints, like I said, for the staff facilities section in the backstage areas. So I think that build has a keeper feed hut and a mechanics facility building. And then obviously the utilities, so the water and the electricity. And that's all of the facilities that are there. There's no staff room because they're quite big and it was gonna take up a lot of space. 
but I thought that in that sort of area in front of the facilities that I should add a few blueprints and so I added some fridges filled with meat that someone put in their gallery because they looked amazing so detailed and I thought they were a really good idea and then I also put a table down so that could be somewhere where they either prepare the meat or use it as a desk or something like that but yeah I just thought that was a cute little detail and then the roofing that I do for that building was basically just a replica of the roofing for my nocturnal house so yeah I did pretty much the exact same thing for that and I'm not the biggest fan of the exterior of this backstage area but I'm not too bothered because it is just a backstage area it's not like something that's the focus of the habitat for the guests so it's not priority but I do feel like I'm still learning how to make good backstage areas a bit and I also think that when I come to add more detailing in terms of the vegetation around the building and then also when I build up the rest of the zoo around the building too hopefully things will start to fill out a little bit more and it will look a little bit more better and realistic but at the minute there's just tons of gaps in this zoo and it's and it's really frustrating because I just want it to be all neat and tidy but it's those fiddly bits that take so long and I can't justify spending all of that time sometimes when I'm making a video because yeah the video will take me hours and hours in itself <laughs> and then I have to do all of the backstage areas too that you won't even see in the footage so yeah I'll, I'll come around to it eventually but there's still a few gaps here and there around the zoo and then I think at the minute you can see the white and metal fence is what I've used for the outside fencing for this habitat but I do change that that is basically the fencing that I use for the the rhino habitat that I've duplicated but I decided to scrap that and make some custom fencing for the cheetahs later on in the video which looks a little bit more like it will prevent like animals from climbing up the fencing which I prefer because I think that's just slightly more realistic so yeah I do like how that turns out so you'll see me do that in a minute and then on a bit of a separate note I wanted to mention the fact that I'm planning to start a franchise zoo very soon so I've currently got two zoos on the go at the minute on my my channel. I've obviously got this one, Anami Zoo, which like I said is a contemporary African zoo and all of the animals in it are going to be African. It's like limited by its region and somewhat by its biome in that I don't think I will include many animals that aren't either desert or grass and animals I'm kind of limiting it to that although we did have the tortoises which I think are tropical but they were kind of contained within like an indoor space so perhaps we'll make exceptions maybe for monkeys because I think it might be hard to find like non-tropical monkeys I'm not sure but we'll see we'll see but yeah the other zoo that I have on my channel is obviously my Canadian nature reserve which is called Pine Springs Park and in that zoo we've been adding a lot of the new North American American animals that came with the North America pack obviously <laughs> but both of these are like I say sandbox mode zoos and they're also limited to their region and their biome they're quite specific so I really want a franchise zoo but I also don't want it to like have a particularly strict architectural theme or biome or like limit to the animals that we're including based on their biome or region like I say it's going to be a temporary zoo and it's going to be based on zoos that I would see in the UK so architecture that I'm familiar with not necessarily a budget zoo but yeah just a more normal zoo for me because <laughs> I'm really excited about that as an idea just because I've got tons of ideas for it and I think yeah I think it would be more fun for me to make something like that based on what I see regularly in zoos near me and it means we can have a variety of animals from different continents and biomes and maybe the zoo will have themed sections within it as well so instead of having one theme throughout the entire zoo we could have like little, little different areas so this area might be the African area and it's got like an African theme design to it and then there could be like a South American area and that kind of thing but recently I've been working hard on designing a specific layout for the entrance area I not, won't necessarily build it all in one go but it's important to sort of plan it out so when you start actually placing things down that they they can stay there and you don't end up wasting money moving them later so I've been really excited planning the entrance layout and hopefully in the first 
episode we could get down a small enclosure. I'm thinking either for a monkey of some sort or for a bird, perhaps the peacocks or the cassowary. Is that how you say it? I think that came with the Australian pack, I want to say. And I'm hoping that this is what my next video is going to be. It's either going to be that or a Sims 4 speed build. For those of you who follow my Sims content on my channel, I haven't posted a speed build in ages for the Sims and I'm sorry about that. I don't know why. I just needed a break. I've done so many. I think I needed to wait for inspiration and I've been feeling really inspired with Planet Zoo build so I've just been focusing on that and doing my Let's Plays as well. But yeah, I had the idea for my farm LP that I wanted to create a tea room, like a granny tea room for, for my LPs. So I've got some great ideas and I want to like do like a really cute interior using all of the cottage living like granny items, <laughs> granny interior items. So I think that would be, be really cute. But yeah, anyway, back to the franchise mode too. It, hopefully that'll be my next episode. But I was just bringing it up because I just wanted to get an idea of what you guys wanted to see from me in terms of content and how often I post certain content because now that I've got more zoos on the go, I would like to know basically which one your favorite is and what you want me to prioritize if you prefer one over another. Or if, for example, you think that whilst the North America pack is reasonably new, whether I should just focus on getting habitats within Pine Springs Park whether you want me to focus on that yeah before the next DLC kind of thing or whether you're not bothered just let me know down in the comments below because it will just really help me out with deciding how to organize my my video uploads because I've got my planet zoo videos I've got potentially three zoos on the go soon and then I've also got two let's plays two sims let's plays to do and then I've also got sims speed builds if I feel like doing a sim speed build so I feel like I've got tons to balance and I've also like lowered my video upload schedule to roughly once a week which is actually doing okay in terms of watch time I'm actually still getting quite a lot of watch time on that schedule so it's not too bad but yeah I just it would just be handy for some feedback so let me know down in the comments below what you like watching basically what your favorite zoo is so that's basically all I had to say we are nearly at the end of the video so I really really hope you liked it I hope you liked the bridge and the rest of the cheetah habitat and you didn't think it was too big like I say because yeah it is quite a big habitat isn't it <laughs> but yeah let me know down in the comments what you thought of it and if you have any feedback of the enclosure or of my zoos like I say and hopefully you're as excited as I am about us starting a franchise mode zoo I did also have a couple of ideas of whether or not I would include any sort of restrictions or rules as to how we breed animals and whether we sort of put any limitations to conservation credits or force ourselves to breed a certain number of animals or aim to get a certain number of conservation credits that kind of thing but if you have any ideas for that let me know down in the comments below but yeah that's it from me basically so as always if you like this video please like comment and subscribe thank you so much for watching i will see you next time bye guys